just going to wait a couple minutes for everyone to join in so feel free to share it and we are going to go with another q and i So I'm going to share it as well in a couple places, just so we've got more people joining in. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, everyone. Kimberly. I've got fun, my first video live with you, so excited. I'm excited too, guys. The last one went really, really well. So uh, I just need a couple minutes, guys, uh, to share the live video in a couple places and also to give you a time to join in and then we can start in a couple minutes. Hi, Dorota, can you pronounce your name really slowly? Oh my goodness. So slowly it is Dorota Palicka, which is D-O-R-O-T-A-P-A-L-I-C-K-A, -A Dorota. And the easiest way to, to pronounce this name is like, you know, work rota. So just use the word rota and then do, do rota. I think people in England and in Scotland quite often call me Dorata. I don't think so, I like it. <laughs> it feels weird. Uh, and Dorota is like a Dorothy in English, a kind of old fashioned name. Hey, hi, 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 Mariella, hi, everyone. So, yeah, I'm just, just going to share this video. And we've got really interesting questions. It's already one past five, so that's me share the post. <laughs> Thank you, Becky. And then I got. Uh, you guys snow it up in Scotland. I am awaiting your snow down in England. Yeah, we had quite a lot of snow. Uh, the mountains are covered with the snow and that's absolutely beautiful. To be honest, like it's a shame for all the uh, snow resorts because uh, they probably had the best winter weather in, a, in the last couple of years and obviously they are losing all this, uh, all this nice weather. Hi, Iris. And uh, uh, we've got quite a few of you. So I will slowly start answering the questions. Uh, just grab some glass of wine, water, coffee, whatever you prefer. And uh, I have saved the questions uh, from, from yesterday. And I think I will try to answer them like uh, one after another. And then I will also answer all the questions uh, you are asking me in this live video as well. So I've got first one from Janet. Uh, hello, I also have one knee, my thumb knee, and my left hand that tends to go curling down. I file it underneath and I keep it as straight as I can. 
but it is my real new on. I put a hard gel over it. Is there anything else I can do? Thank you for your time. Okay, so when we've got the nails which are curving down the way, um, ideally, like in general, when I'm sculpting the nails, I'm placing the form really nice and straight, even going a little bit up. Uh, so that will give you a longer time of your nail extensions growing kind of straight. But unfortunately, because this is uh, your natural nail anatomy, there is nothing else you can do it. Uh, so uh, tips is definitely not a good idea for those nails which are growing down the way because when we glue in the tips and we want a really good contact with the natural nail plate, the tip will go down as well. So definitely sculpting would be a better option. Just put the form straight or even a little bit uh, up. I've got my um, index fingers growing down a little bit as well and I can get a maximum about three months, uh, maybe four months, so up to three infills. Um, for the shape to look pretty decent uh, and then I just remove them and start again to keep the nice shape. You could also drill it from underneath as well but I find it is really so time consuming that sometimes it's quicker just to, to apply uh, new extensions. Uh, hi Mich Michelle, oh, gosh I'm so bad guys if I pronounce your name so wrong please forgive me. Welcome to the channel lovers. Uh, thank you so much for all your support. And then I've got Linsley West. I don't even know what to ask on the spot, lol. Give me a little bit. I will come up with some good ones. Um, is there going to be specific topic you want to talk about? Okay, so in general, like, we can ask, talk about any kind of subjects. I think the nail industry is so like so big uh, that you could talk about it like through the days and months and they wouldn't be the end of the subjects, honestly, guys. Then I've got uh, another question from Jen Maxwell. Is build your gel the same as fiber gel? Yes. So uh, we, we've got a few different types of the gels. Um, in general, as a gel, we've got a three-phase system gel. So you need always a primer. You need the actual build your gel and then you need the top coat to finish the system and they are three phase gels they are also one phase gels and this gel they have like a primer top coat uh, like a base gel and a top coat i'm not the fan of the one phase uh, system gels because i feel like there is no such as amazing product which can do all in one uh, you will always lose on the quality either less uh, attention to the natural nail or less shine um, but the fiber gel, it is a builder gel, it is a sculpting gel which needs to be filed off. So it's exactly the same as a hard three-phase gel. Um, with this difference, that is enhanced with an extra fibers which gives you the strength uh, of the product. So um, that's why I'm a fan of it and I find it like it is really, really uh, great like for a thinner nail extensions. And I'm a huge fan of the thinner nail extensions. Like I, I really don't like the nails which are so thick. Um, so I can apply a little bit less product uh, and it's still going to be a same strength uh, like a normal builder uh, gel. So that's the only difference. Um, so it's a kind of like a builder gel with extra fiber strength in the in it. And then I've got, hi Brittany, hi Brian, hi everyone, my guys. Uh, I'm, I will be answering all the questions as well. So. Does fiber gel give you more flexibility than the builder uh, gel? In general, gel is always more flexible than the acrylics. Um, like acrylic is stronger, but sometimes stronger doesn't mean stronger. Gosh, this sounds stupid. But imagine a glass. Glass is a really, really hard, like in a structure, but at the same time, it's fragile. So it's really strong, but we can also break it. But if we've got uh, some plastic and you try to bend it, it wouldn't break straight away. It has some kind of bending point. Um, so that's what applies a little bit to the gels. The gels in general are more, more flexible, uh, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say it's like more flexible than the normal gel uh, and the fiber gel. In general, the gels are always more flexible than the acrylics. Okay. Let's go back to the questions from the yesterday's because I've got really fantastic ones. And here I've got Tara. I would like to know more about your HEMA free products. 
I have been really struggling to find a good product that can um, that I can use due to hema, uh, hema allergy. Okay, so uh, hema is a um, chemical compound uh, which is in a monomer, and most like obviously when we're talking about the acrylics, it's easy. Like we've got the monomer, and it can be uh, hema free, and um, the ingredients aren't as bad as we have been told so it is all depending on the percentage uh, of the product as well so try when you're always checking your material safety data sheet uh, check what is the position of the hema on the on the sheet if it's really high up that means the concentration of hema in the product is really really uh, really high and anything above 40 to 50 percent uh, i wouldn't be using those kind of products because that's mean they are you've got lots of risk of an allergic reactions and he might like uh, is added also to the gels as well not only to the like acrylic monomer but also to the gels and in the gels it has great benefits actually because it gives you a better adhesion of the gel to the natural meal plate and it also gives you a thinner viscosity of the gels like they they, they kind of uh, thinner uh, as well and the problem is with the uncured products so once the product is cured it doesn't give us allergies and if it's uncured then when when we've got the overexposure like a skin contact too much uh, then we can become allergic but if you've got the allergy to hema then you definitely need to have the products which are hema free which doesn't contain this um, uh, chemical even in like one two percent because obviously you will get the allergy uh, anyway and uh, most of the neil uh, neil perfect range is hema free um, there is a different ingredient which is much more expensive like see on example of the gels uh, the gels are mainly um, mainly um, oligomers and this is a really expensive like product to buy uh, so those the dihema which has the similar um, similar um, in polish similar it's doing a similar stuff with the hema dose but it's more expensive it's not as dangerous as well it gives less allergic reactions uh, and it's more expensive to buy it for the factories like which produce all the gels and acrylics um, so you need to look into into the products which are uh, hema free and i suggest to check always the material safety data sheets which are available like always if you ask i don't think so those informations are usually like public because uh, then you've got all the in ingredients of the products and not every company wants to really uh, share that but on their request yes they are they are available and then you could um, uh, you could check um, that most of the new perfect products are hema free and um, this is actually a really important subject i could talk about it a little bit longer as well because uh, I choose that's one of the reasons why I why I choose the Neil Perfect products as well because I've got sensitivity like I have to watch it like I, um, I, I'm a bit asthmatic and I've got some eczema that's why cameraman is so good and he he, do, he does the dishes so eventually my parents bought us a dish, dishwasher because it was a shame on poor Patrick doing all this kind of stiff, uh, stuff because I wanted to save my hands otherwise uh, I'm getting like a blisters and really itchy um, itchy eczema um, and uh, how it works with the allergic uh, reactions I, I think we should do one more live tutorial only on allergic reactions honestly guys it is so fantastic subject so i have been using some hand sanitizer uh, and this is something which we use for every service like for every single person and i have noticed that my skin is starting going like really itchy and red i didn't stop using this uh, product i was still using this product and um, then my skin started to peel off and um, I was starting getting the blisters and then it was a time for me like okay this is pretty dangerous if I don't stop using this hand sanitizer I could become permanently allergic to this product and then the ingredients which gives me the allergy if this is an explanation which I would say to the child so imagine these ingredients are also in I don't know in the clothes it is impossible but say imagine they are in the clothes I wouldn't be able to wear the clothes as well so it is really important that we watch for the allergic reactions because if you become allergic to the one ingredient you wouldn't be able to use anything which contains uh, this ingredient uh, so always stop it and uh, Another very important thing I want to talk like, I mean, most of you probably guys are gel nail technicians because the channel is mainly gel. But uh, with the gels, the stuff is very easy because when we put the hand inside the lamp, the gel cures. 
and we feel like, okay, this product is safe, it's cured. But remember, there's also inhibition layer, and inhibition layer is an uncured product, so that's what can cause allergies as well. So the product which is uncured, which is like a fresh product, and then the inhibition layer, uh, this is pretty dangerous. With acrylics, situation is even worse, because the acrylics, the set time, in average, of course, depending on the brand, but in average, the acrylics uh, set, which means it's hard, in about three minutes time. But a full cure for acrylics takes anything from 24 to 48 hours. So when you do the acrylic, that's why acrylic also gives more allergies than the gel, I feel personally. So when your acrylic is set, you start filing it. But what you're doing is you filing on cured product because full cure is 24 to 48 hours. And then all this dust and everything goes on your client's hands, on your hands, then the dust is flying as well for hours. And this is a cure product, which is danger, which is causing the allergies. So this is something uh, worth to remember. And that's why I'm always having the dust collector, collector as well to kind of get rid of any, any dust. So that's um, this question answered. Now I will go to the comments I've gotten here because I need to catch up with you guys. I need to really catch up. And what I've got, glittery hacks. What do you like better, acrylic or a gel? Um, I personally prefer gel. And, and the reason, like, when I started doing uh, my first training, we was, um, we was learn how to do the acrylics and we was learn how to do the gels and fiber gel as well, because that was years, years ago. Uh, but I think that I'm fan of the gel, first of all, uh, because I'm a sensitive person, like in general, like with uh, tendency to be asthmatic, <laughs> eczema, but migraines, uh, working with the acrylics uh, that can give me like some headaches sometimes, like even like a very watery eyes and uh, I can feel, I can feel my, uh, I'm talking about like extreme hours of working with the acrylics because if I would do one set, nothing is happening obviously, but like all day long, uh, my body just doesn't like it, uh, the smell of it. And I think that's the main, uh, main reason. And another reason about it is I feel like with the gel, the gel do more work for me, so I don't have to file as much. And I'm not the nail technician which like filing and the dust. And uh, with the gel, uh, because it's self-leveling, we've got less filing. That's what I feel. And I feel like it's a little bit quicker. Of course, you can get a different results with both of the systems. And they are some fantastic things, things which you can do it with the acrylics. Like, and of course, I use acrylics for a beautiful 3D work, like extreme even uh, um, uh, designs. Uh, and I will be always using it for that. That's why I think I prefer doing a gel like for every day. And then uh, also what I find it as well, I probably prefer the gel as well because the gel is not porous. So the acrylics, uh, acrylics you can soak it off just because they've got like a little holes ish like they've got pores so the acetone can get inside and it's easy to soak off gel doesn't have that most of the gels because some of them are soak off but gel doesn't have that and i find it because of this reason it doesn't go as dirty even like you know like i had on one hand i had acrylics and gels the same kind of style nails and i find that the gels was kind of lasting shinier better on the beginning acrylic looking uh, was looking shinier but in general like the acrylic got dirty quicker because of the new pair of jeans or like a black coat i could see those stains so uh, that's another thing and i never soak off nails and like i, I prefer filing them i think as uh, soaking off is not damaging to the nails that's that's the first thing like it's definitely not damaging for the nails but uh, i find it uh, Quite often, uh, nail technicians uh, are a bit lazy, sorry guys, but we we soak off a little bit of product and then we scrape too much. And scraping the product off from the nails is very dangerous. That's why I prefer filing, because uh, if you swap the gradation of the file, so you're starting with the e-file, then go grid 100, then 180, and then buffer, you wouldn't hurt the natural nails. And then if we're soaking off, uh, we would quite often uh, use the cuticle pusher to scrape the product and sometimes it is too soon and I think this is causing the damage. Okay, now I've got another question. I don't want to uh, miss any of them. Hi, Vin, would you recommend a Bourdieu gel for growing shorter biotin nails? 
uh, yes, I think like in general, any kind of product on top of the natural nails is going to protect them um, from biting. And that's what I find it with my clients as well. Like when they've got really, uh, this is actually pretty interesting as well. So the biting nails always grow faster. Just because like I always try to explain it to my clients, like imagine like uh, you cut yourself and there is a damage in your skin, the brain gets the signal like we need to repair, we need to repair and set all those cells and the repair process is starting and the same with the nails. If we bite them really extremely, the, the body feels there is a damage and they grow faster just so you've got more to bite. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only kidding, but um, yeah, that's why it's important, like the maintenance for the biting nails is uh, quicker. So usually I would advise about two weeks, uh, uh, but having a product is preventing biting. Like I find I was a biter myself, like a really extreme biter, like even to the blob. And then eventually I managed to grow uh, my index finger. I was like, oh my goodness, they're so beautiful. They're amazing. Like, and I start painting it with the normal nail polish. And because it was so nice, I stopped biting my nails. Uh, so definitely yeah, having a product on top of your uh, nails is, is protecting it from the biting. Then I've got those, uh, when, okay, I've got Dorothy. When I use gel over my own nails, my pinky and some other nails curl in. It looks like a sicker, but looks like a straw. Okay, so you're talking uh, about sicker. So they are not growing down, but they've got C curve, which means they really strongly curled. Uh, what I have, that could be actually a bonus a little bit. I always like to explain it on a flat piece of paper. If the cameraman can pass me some. The paperwork one will do. He's doing the paperwork as well. <laughs> so when we've got a flat piece of paper, um, the, the paper is very wobbly. But when we've got the piece of paper which is having a nice C curve, the paper is much stronger. So actually a curve is a good thing. And what I have noticed with my nails, uh, because I used to be a biter, they was really flat. And then once I start uh, having a really nice nails, the curve was getting bigger and bigger. And I prefer them with the curve. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. But sometimes if the natural nail is very thin and they catch the water, uh, they, they, they kind of expand and then when they drying up they shrink a little bit more and you could also see the curvature so check if there is any loose mm, any kind of loose places where the water could um, go in there and uh, that's why your nails could work too much and that's why you could see this uh, C curve uh, to be ex more extreme and in this case uh, if that's the case just apply the cuticle oil uh, underneath of your nails like to pre preventing those uh, changing of the shape of the natural C curve uh, what else I got Becky, I have been using press-ons lately, Kiara Sky Jail News with perfect C-curve. How do I get that perfect C-curve with the tips? Okay, so the tips, you just it's a hard question to answer. Um, you could technically pinch the tips as well, but I find it that I find it that pinching the tips is really difficult and also the natural nails, there was also a question regarding the pinching. So let's talk about the pinching. Um, this is your, this is your tip, which is uh, pinched a little bit. And then on, you have to apply the tip. On top of that, you have to apply the gel product. And if you would squeeze it and pinch it, it um, I find it quite often the gel, the gel would kind of come off from the sides. Uh, so pinching would be only good idea for a first of all, like a strong nails. So my nails are perfect for the pinching. Like they, they I never get having an issue with the product like coming up from the sides. Uh, just because my natural nail kind of pinch the same way like the gel does. But if you've got very thin nails, the, the gel will just lift off from the, um, from the, the gel will lift off from the nail plate. Uh, just because the nail plate would pinch more and the gel would pinch less. And I think the same thing applies to the tips. The tips must be more flexible, at least the ones I have used, and uh, the gel was coming off. So um, 
with the acrylic probably things will be more different because acrylics kind of stick in uh, even to the glass like surface why the gel needs really sticky surface or a very rough surface so um i think you will just really need to find a, a tips which are having like a really beautiful c curve and uh, don't give them an extra pinch uh, that's why i prefer sculpting on my nails and uh, rather than the tips uh, okay now i need to go and check the questions here so i've got mandy hi i've got angela hi dorota i always watch your videos got some stuff from you just love it all and then i've got angela just done my nail with your gel i love it your post oh thank you guys <laughs> I'm just sending some love cards and other questions. Um, hi, Lindsay. Yes, I'm having a great day. Hi, Steph. You're only nine minutes late. And uh, then I've got Mihail, gosh, I'm so bad with the name. Sorry, guys. Chat as Laurie, not Christopher. Hi, enjoy your beautiful nails. Have my own salon just starting out. Glad to finally to figure it out how to join you. Also, enjoy your videos with Susie Neil Carrier. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Hi, Claudia. Hi, Angela. Hi, guys. Uh, I've got also Christine. Thank you for advice in the last live chat. I have managed to blend my cuticles on my dominant hand almost as good as the other hand loves your videos i'm glad you find it very helpful and uh, this is awesome now i'm just going into more questions guys from you and also as usual there is a week competition as well so um the person which will just write in the comments of the live video like share will be pick up tomorrow to win a beautiful prize which is going to be a one stroke uh, nail art training for a beginners uh, with a certificate and uh, we will pick up the winner uh, so just guys write in the comments down that you have shared it on the other social media as those live and then we will pick up uh, the winner i with my favorite technique one stroke training and then hi Karas hi Dorothy then I'm not a Neil Tech I've got Angela which is not a Neil Tech I just enjoy to do my own I love your videos you tell us and what you tell us in ways we can understand I'm glad because I'm trying to like because I have experience like um, meeting so many different people some uh, experienced nail technician but also beginners as well like I'm trying to explain the things so even the child could kind of understand because sometimes it can be uh, very very confusing now let's go into the next question so I've got um, I just uh, started playing with press on nails because I have minor difficulties using my left hand after suffering a stroke. Any pro tips for adhering the press on nails on natural nails? They seem to be popping off. So when we're working with the press on nails, the nail prep is a key to the success. Same like working with the normal extensions. When your nails are really properly prepped, everything is going to stay on them. So there cannot be any oils, there cannot be any dust. Um, and uh, this way the nails will stay on really good and long time so i would say definitely a prep like a good uh, nail prep uh, will will change uh, a lot and then you could use either a glue um, i'm not the fan of the press on nails myself because i feel like the removal can be pretty damaging to the natural nails i always like to have a little bit of the product to protect my natural nails so i would suggest you apply maybe like a base even the gel polish base and the top coat and then attach the, of course, on the rough surface, like don't attach to the shiny surface on the rough, it has to be buffed, and then attach the press on nails. So then they will, um, they will stuff. Uh, Steph just shared it all over the Facebook, so I cross the fingers for a one stroke training. And then I got Claudia, share it. Uh, Claudia, thank you so much. I mean, like I have been going sometimes to Facebook and I see like you sharing my stuff like crazy. Thank you so much. Big kisses for that. Like I, I have seen it at so many times. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, Kimberly, so good luck, guys. Uh, the one stroke training is an absolutely amazing uh, one. I think, sorry, guys. 
I think there is about eight eight or nine designs where, which I explain like step by step uh, for a complete beginner how to pick up the paints like and everything so definitely a training work to win and then I've got another questions I have sculpted my first ever set with the designer double C's I love them I couldn't have done it without your without of your tutorials I'm glad you guys like liking the tutorials and then I've got Barbara. Hi Dorota, I have trouble taking gel polish off. What is the best way to remove gel polish? Absolutely fab question. And Neil Perfect actually is a good example of it as well. So years ago, when the gel polish just came out, uh, the Neil Perfect came with the um, gel polish, which was so easy to soak off. Like I was just two scratches on the top coat, wrapped in with the uh, foils, and then the soak off removal remover because it was more gentle than the acetone 10 minutes and then basically almost with the foil all the gel polish was off and i was loving doing uh, soak of gel polish to my clients and soaking it off this way because i didn't have to uh, force the removal i didn't have to scrape the natural nail plate and their natural nails have been really amazing but what is happening over the time over the time the clients wants like the nails which last forever and then obviously the manufacturers wants to give them the product what they want so the gels become stronger and I find it like on the beginning when the gel polishes have been introduced they have been extremely easy to soak off like really easy to soak off and then over the years they become more pure gel uh, because the nail technicians want like a better coverage, like and more pigmented gels, longer lasting ones, and they harder to take off. Also, quite often we start using the no white top gels, which are not soakable. So normally you would have a soak, soak of base, soak of color, and soak of top coat. And now quite often we apply soak of gel polish and then apply the no white top gel with no inhibition layer because it gives a longer shine it lasts longer yes of course it lasts longer same like i was talking about the gels and acrylics it lasts longer because it doesn't have the pores which can absorb the product uh, and get the nails to uh, soak off so uh, i think that's the problem and in this case i wouldn't recommend soaking all the nails i think a better idea would be to file the nails file the product off and to be able to find the product off, you need to have some thicker base underneath, so you are not going to hurt the natural nail. Um, and that's what I'm. That's what I start doing for my clients. So I have forgot about soaking off, and now I'm just filing uh, the product off by applying a little bit thicker uh, base or even a layer of a soak off gel. And the soak off. And this is a good. Uh, Another good question, um, which come up after this one. So when we're working with the soak of gels, they more flexible. Like the most flexibles are the soak of gels. They work totally with the natural nail plate, and I would more recommend it using the soak of gels on the natural nail plate rather than the hard product because hard product kind of doesn't work together with the natural nail. And if the natural nails are strong, nothing is happening. But if the natural nails are very bendy then the natural nail bends and the gel might kind of chips off. So I prefer the flexible gels, which are the soak of gels on the natural nail plate. But I'm not the fans of some of the rubber base because they quite often get the ear and then this is pretty dangerous as well. Let's go for the next questions. Um, okay, how do you get all of the dust and bits completely out of cuticle and side walls? all the dust and bits completely okay i clean them really good with a flame bead and file but no matter how much i wipe or brush is there always seems to be white bits stuck stuck okay i think you refer to the cuticle work um okay so how do i do it basically they are two different things and this is a pretty hard subject because on the natural nail plate we've got the cuticle and this is a dead tissue which we need to remove and then i'm not the fan of the excessive work around the nail folds 
Um, because if we overdo it, we are hurting the living tissue and that will cause a scarring and that will cause the overgrowth of the cuticle as well. And um, you could also use the cuticle remover, mm -hmm. but then mm -hmm. with the cuticle, like to soften your cuticles, with the cuticle remover, you will really need to clean the nail plate before you apply any product, because uh, otherwise that will cause the lifting as well. So you have to be very careful, uh, careful with that. And um, if you find it, it that the drill when you're doing a e final work and you still got bits and pieces, I believe maybe you are not taking off everything and I will probably do a little bit more. Uh, but as I say, it's like to the point where you are not touching the living tissue. Um, and each new fold, each cuticles are so different. I also find it like we base in Scotland and I find it when I'm doing a client from like uh, Central Europe, like say, I don't know, Polish girl, Russian girl, Latvian girl. We, I think we've got different new folds. They, they kind of harder in general. I think I, I feel like I can go more with my e file. That's first of all on the young, like on the very young clients, I wouldn't go as excessive because they, their skin is completely uh, different as well. But I think it's just a matter of, of going and doing more work if you can still have some uh, dust and bits and pieces uh, coming off of it. Then I've got another one question. Jesse, I have been sculpting my nails using paper forms. I am new at this, but my biggest problem is on some nails, I will have small gaps and missing products on the corners where the natural nails meets the extension. Sorry, when I'm, when I'm reading loud, I cannot catch the question. So, okay, so, Jesse is having a gaps and missing products in the corners where the natural nail meets the extensions. So the corners is just on the sides. That's mean you are just, you probably, you probably have the form which is not fit in hundred uh, percent, or you've got, uh, you are not applying enough products on the sides. Like when I'm doing a demonstration on how to sculpt the nails, uh, that's quite a lot of videos, check them out as well. I usually say that when I'm building the skeleton of the nails, I'm applying a little bit more product on the sides and a little bit longer for, uh, longer length because it takes me only two moves of the file to file it up, to file it uh, any excess of the product, but at least I'm not going to have enough. So only on the first layer. So like don't build your full structure and full nails so, um, so, so low. Uh, but only the first uh, skeleton which you are building, so you've got something extra. I think that's that's the only uh, problem you are having. So it's a form fit and then just apply a tiny bit more product uh, on the sides. And another one. How to avoid lifting. I always put products near the cuticle and I always work it three hours or more, even for short nails. How you work just for two hours. Thanks. Okay, so how to avoid the lifting? The lifting is happening because of many, many, many reasons. Like, and the main reason would be a wrong nail prep. So if there is any dust, any oils, um, any cuticle, uh, that's when the nails uh, are going to lift. If you apply the product too thin, the product is going to lift. If you apply the product too thick, the product is going to lift. If you don't blend it really well around the cuticle area, the product is going to lift. Um, if your clients are really heavy candid, the product is going to lift. If they've got some health issues, the product is going to lift. So if they even wash their hair like with the hair conditioner and you didn't dehydrate it properly, the product is going to lift. If you have used a different primer and different gel, the product will lift. So the reasons can be like, many 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 reasons and I would suggest that you do really work on your meal prep like and you always got a good meal prep no cuticles uh, no the tissue no dust and it's properly dehydrated and after you have applied the gel you blend everything well around the cuticle area so there's no places you can catch so when you go and inspect the meal after it's finished 
you cannot tell where the gel is starting. I find it doing the, the gel or even acrylics like so blended around the cuticle area after the application is preventing the lifting. Like, and that was the biggest game changer for me like when it was coming to the lifting issues. The product might also lift because we have used too strong uh, gradation of the file and when we're moving so hard we are kind of moving the product as well so it could also lift because we have used too strong file and uh, and another uh, question for that was I always work at three hours or more even for short meals how do you work for two hours <laughs> sorry so again don't rush it when I started doing the nails, it was taking me even four or five hours for a short set of the nails. They weren't even like perfect, uh, but I didn't want to shorten the time. So first of all, I wanted to learn how to do the good shape nails, long lasting nails. And then once I knew it, that I was saving the time. So for a short nails um, on the tips, like I'm taking like, I would say the quickest I can do is 36 minutes with the gel polish application. In general, 45 minutes for a French manicure or one color with the artwork, short nails, an hour, an hour, 15 minutes, long coffee nails, about two hours. And a, and a really lots of time savers is you've got your gels, wipes, like blue scrub first, then the UV cleanser behind, the brush, the drill. So I've got everything, like I don't need to search for the things and uh, I've got the draw with the glitters. And if I go into the draw, I want to pick up the glitter. I want even if they mix, I know where is my glitter like. So you're not losing the time for searching the things. And it's definitely much easier if you've got a setup of uh, like a silent setup or even if you're working from home like that, you've got everything in a correct place. If you're working on the tips in a school, they teach us to take the tip out from the box, measure it, put on the side of the table, then take another tip, measure, put on the side of the table. And that was really so time consuming. And um, after I have skipped this uh, steps and I was just straight away applying the, the tip into the nail, that saved me at least like 15 minutes. Um, another Another thing, like if you apply your product pretty well, you wouldn't have to file as much. So again, you can save some time, but try to work on one thing at the time. Uh, so again, if I'm working in a salon with the tips, I'm not preparing the entire meal plate straight away uh, because it will be a waste of the time for me. So first of all, I'm starting with the place where I've got the natural meal at the free edge and where the tip is going to go over it then apply the tip and then because I have to blend the tip I will do the rest of the nail prep and then use uh, the uh, e-file to clean my cuticles in case if there is any place where the tip is very hard to blend for me then I could use the small bit uh, so I'm trying to kind of always work in this way uh, saying the curing time is really uh, important you don't want to kind of wait for the nails to cure uh, so the flash cure is usually enough to freeze the product so we can put the next layer and I'm constant kind of swapping the hands and uh, this is a, another really big uh, time saver uh, but don't panic about the time honestly like uh, I would suggest you 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 concentrate first on the quality of your work and then once you've got that try to shorten some um, some time so what I find it as well like the new prep should take me about 15 minutes 15 minutes should take me like a um, tips application and shaping of them. Fif 10 minutes the gel application. Okay, you say 15 minutes the gel application and uh, 15 minutes shaping, 15 minutes gel polish application. Um, and try to kind of give yourself those frame and then try to work on it. I'm sure you will get there like uh, everyone starting slow like and, and there is nothing wrong with that. Now let's see what other questions I got. Yay. Yeah, thank you, Claudia. Uh, okay, I've got Pam asking, as someone who is learning, in your opinion, should I learn to do acrylic before fiber gel? Fiber gel is just a gel, so like I, I will call it in general a gel. I think so. Like, I, I feel like 
when they teach in schools and they teach us this way as well they teach us acrylics first before we move on in the gel because in general there is a thinking that the gel is easier to do than the acrylics and once you start working with the gel you wouldn't want to do acrylics uh, so if you want to offer both services then yes you would better off starting with the acrylics because once you try and dry gel i think you will stick to the gel and uh, this is a good question as well if i will expand it a little bit more i think it's also depending on the town you live in and the reputation of the products like we live in a small we live in a small town and in our town the gel has better reputations than the acrylics um, just because people find that the gel needs last really long the gel extensions um, look fine, they, um, they, they, they stronger and all those kind of uh, great things. But I think it's depending on the new tech. And then if most of your clients is um, experiencing like that they had amazing acrylic nails and then bad gel nails, they would always say acrylic is better and opposite way if they would have bad experience with the acrylic they would say acrylic is worse gel is better so it's depending on the reputation on the region and what kind of experience your clients are having um, to be honest like even if the client comes in to me and they ask about the acrylics i kind of quite often ask them why they prefer the acrylics why they want really acrylics and quite often as like first of all they don't know the difference in between this uh, two and um, secondly they they even don't know that's the gel it's a gel and it's not acrylic um, so by acrylics quite often they mean the extension so i kind of have to explain them all this difference uh, as well so again i would uh, think you would be better off doing a research on your um, area to check like what kind of clients market you've got if there is more interest in acrylics news or a gel nails and again later on a personal preference uh, which whichever you prefer to work with uh, is it a gel or acrylics then i've got jen very sensitive sorry <laughs> very sensitive skin around my cuticle when i file the new product it scratch my cuticle area and irritates and cuts it does the area become stronger over time so it won't so it won't hurt when filing anymore okay i don't think so uh, the question the question to you from me do you etch the surface of the nail file when you've got a brand new file it has some really rough edges and i'm always cleaning my file from those rough edges uh, then when i'm filing i'm really kind of holding the nail folds down so my file so my file doesn't cut or catch the skin and uh, i think it will be a technique of the filing as well so if it's hard to control the file in a rounded motion try maybe filing more kind of like a straight uh, straight motion and definitely remove the yeah that's what we call and definitely remove the edges uh, of the file so when i've got the new file i will just go with the old file and i will go just like and remove the the sharp edges so when you're going with your finger and usually i even check it in here you shouldn't be able to cut yourself like by going like this if you do uh, that's mean this i can feel it on this side is too strong and too rough so always check your files yeah like really um this is a helpful tip uh, i mean i know most of you guys doing it so um so it could be like that your folds are really really gentle but then you will be just need to file more extreme like extremely careful and i have some clients with i need to with I have some clients where I need to be really careful as well um, because if I file just a little bit too strong and uh, I could hurt them as well so I'm always holding the nail folds like with my fingers and for that I'm using this um, tape around my fingers as well uh, to protect my fingers from filing um, in general like the folds should go a little bit stronger as well because obviously if we're damaging the tissue all the time eventually it's kind of grow thicker uh, so yes it they could become stronger but like it wouldn't be a huge difference uh, it is the same kind of like getting used to a hot plate say example like the skin tough up a little bit uh, after a, a long exposure 
I got Angela asking me here. Just started to run out of my gel, so lost. Oh, okay. I hope. Uh, I hope. Okay. Then I got Tanya. I think that was the best choice. I did my acrylic first, and I love it. And I and at Hard Bulgaria gels two years ago, and I love all really. Every nail is different. Everyone has different needs. Uh, good to know how to work with both. You are absolutely right, Tanya. Um, it's necessary to work with uh, both because both give us uh, different experience, like acrylics. Like I love acrylics the way they can pinch. Like you can get really amazing shape of the nails. They can pinch so well, and, and that's the reason why. Um, uh, I've, that's the reason why I've got the uh, got the uh, love acrylics as well. Then I've got another question. Hi from India. Hi. One more problem I have is flooding the cuticles a lot. Why? Can't I get that right? Okay, so when you're flooding the cuticles, you're probably having too much product. So I would suggest around the cuticle area, you're working really nice and thin. And same on the side walls, really nice and thin. Uh, then the, the product wouldn't run into your cuticle area. And you don't need like lots of product there. Um, you need most of the products on your apex and a stress point. So, um, this tip helped me a lot as well because uh, quite often when we apply actually always when we apply the product in the middle by the time we finish the application and by the time the client or we pick the hand inside the lamp the product is going to move a little bit to the side so you are going to have this extra product on the sides anyway and if you put too much plus the product which run then the cuticles are always flooded so definitely a thinner application there and another question. Hi from India. Angela, have you used all different files and techniques and it doesn't help? Okay, that's you guys talking in between. <laughs> okay, Angela, I would ask you like, do you itch the sharp edges of the files? Because I think like sometimes like honestly, before you start filing, check it. If it's if it's hurting your finger, if you go like this and it's hurting your finger, that's mean you didn't itch the surface of the file enough. And I find it myself like sometimes two moves is not enough to remove all those eight rough parts. And then I can find myself to be hard a little bit as well. Um, so th this is the biggest uh, helpful tip for me, like to don't feel any sore fingers uh, when I'm filing. I've got Jintia, I hope pronounced it right. I have super sensitive aponicum too. Right now I'm just coming to working a bit away from the skin and doing my nails more, more frugently. Uh, I'm always working pretty close. Like I definitely think as a guy's like it's a issue with the too sharp file, like uh, and going uh, too close. Like, but try it honestly. Try it and give me a feedback. Like touching it on your on your skin. Like the most sensitive part of our skin is like you know check, checking the baby milk if it's ready. And if you feel it, it hurting here. This means it will hurt your nail folds and uh, cuticle area as well. And Mandy is busy, have several appointments today. Oh my goodness, I'm jealous. Like, I'm so jealous, Mandy. You can work on the clients. Uh, uh, we are shut since December, and it looks like this is going to, um, to be another long uh, time. Thank you, Jenny, so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Then I've got, then I've got, sorry, I, I, I'm kind of speechless now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jenny, one more time. I've got, Wow, 
where do you announce kimberly where do you announce the winner of the contents i didn't see a winner from the last live okay so the the winner from the last live was christine she have already climbed her price if you end with us just confirm that uh, in the bottom so i always put it in the uh, in a post like um, i just post the name of the winner and then send them the give them details of my email address and that they contact me so she did contact me as well and she received her price uh, so does the previous prices like if that was a product i think there was a set of the brushes as well if this person is watching as well you can also uh, kind of confirm yes christine was the winner from a week ago and she already uh, so, even so post the training. comment like first thing i have ever won i can't even win an argument lol that's what she have post so uh, the prizes are always uh, going up to the winners and we always inform them as well like in public and the posts uh, and today the uh, the winner can win the one straw training for the beginners then uh, then another question I've got thank you Angela so much like guys I'm so surprised I'm actually useless when it comes to those kind of stuff uh, it's usually a cameraman which has more ideas so I will probably ask him like what it is how how it happened thank you so much Angela Fletcher I'm surprised actually there are options like this where do you announce? Okay, so the winners are sorted. Hi, Minerva. Mrs. Dorota, I am struggling with acrylic nails. I will not give up. Can you do more tutorials on acrylic nails and tips? Yes and yes. On acrylic nails, yes, I will do more tutorials. And the reason for it is because I'm loving doing a gel so much, but also I'm teaching both techniques on my exams, like, because obviously when you're educator, like you have to do your exam works as well. And they judge me on acrylics as well. Uh, so I will be practicing for myself, also doing tutorials on acrylics too. And um, uh, quite, quite, um, we've got a playlist with it. I need to really kind of feel a courage to do it. Um, because I'm not the fan, so I think I, I will be doing maybe a 3D design. Cameraman is laughing now because he always <laughs> pushed for me like, you should do more acrylics, you should do more acrylics. Uh, so Tracy, those, be watching Tracy yeah, if you, she loves she watching now. So she loving too. Uh, Patrick <laughs> says Tracy is watching. I need to go and check it there. I didn't check. Ah, uh, okay. Because uh, while well, so one of my friends, like really amazing Neil Tech and educator as well, she always pushed on me uh, to do the acrylics as well. Uh, so yeah i will be i will be doing more acrylics and i need to guys show you like I'm, I'm desperate to get back to the salon like if we get back to the salon i will be able to show you how to how i'm applying the tips and oh my goodness this is so amazing because uh, i can show you how to apply the tips into a short almond shape how to save the time what to do so the tips don't catch the air when we put them in and that was a biggest um, help uh, for my girls like because uh, obviously we run the salon and i'm getting sometimes new girls uh, which might have even two or three uh, years of experience but they never uh, done the things this way so i definitely i promise like i'm going to do the tutorial on how to apply the nail uh, tips on the biting nails amazing stuff like and it works for my clients that their nails lasting and even if it's done on the tip because uh, quite a lot of times most of the nail technicians have been told like you have to use the sculpting forms if the nails are biting i'm using the tips quite often and my clients getting a really long lasting enhancements with a beautiful nails and, and we manage to grow them as well so i will i promise i will do the tutorials on that um because i love the tips like for 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 this reason as well and then i've got i've got angela yes you're right i did, didn't do it enough last time um i sliced my finger okay so yeah i'm happy the the tips with the file helps and try it and i want to hear your feedback in any new video i will post it up just write me did it uh, work with the files uh, thank you so much jen uh, thank you so much i really appreciate it uh, i'm kind of blushing a little bit now guys uh, i've got gitya what were your favorite new trends of the last year last year favorite new trend 
uh, uh, rings and foam bubble. Oh, yes. So last year, favorite nail trend was uh, foam bubble nails, like where we was using the uh, um, washing up liquid to create a foam and then apply it on the nails. And I think, guys, this trend is going to be really popular this year as well because the fashion, um, the fashion for 2021 is like pinks. So anything pink, anything which has uh, some cuts out like brass, I need to lose the weight for that as well now, like uh, uh, because they are going to be really fashion. And another very fashion thing is a kind of laces and um, cut out things. And I'm actually like, you know, the trousers which, which have some empty spaces. So I think kind of lacy designs are going to be in fashion and nails as well. And the snake skin. So foam bubble is perfect to creating a snake skin. And you need to learn this technique and incorporate it in your designs because uh, it will be hot this year too. What else uh, I like? I like the ring trend when we was doing uh, the acrylic rings and I have prepared uh, the tutorial and I think maybe I will post it tomorrow. Uh, with the glasses, um, I have um, I have done a beautiful shiner, like designer, log, this year designer kind of news are hot as well. So I have done some designer glasses with the Chanel logo and I recorded tutorials for you and I will post it up tomorrow. Like we are working like a crazy with the cameraman. Uh, so the glasses are fantastic uh, and I promise I will post this uh, tutorial uh, tomorrow like a beautiful logo actually on the black it will look even better I'm just checking and um, and uh, this is what is going to be uh, really popular uh, this year so last year I liked the rings and this year I will also produce some videos how to do maybe beautiful pendants how to paint the easter eggs guys like I've got so many different ideas uh, to show you and especially now on the lockdown, obviously, like Scotland, England, um, where we can use the new stuff for us, things in the house as well. Okay, what other questions I've got? Uh, hi from Romania, hi, and then from Switzerland, I've got Flavia, hi Flavia, 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 I think I'm, um, uh, yeah, I remember you. Uh, I've got uh, one more question, how do you avoid having bubbles for finishing and to use it ultra gloss. Okay, sorry, I need to read this question again. One more question, how to avoid having bubbles for finishing I use it ultra gloss. I think you need to ask me this question again because I'm not sure if I understand this correct. But I think you mean like having air bubbles in the gel or in the acrylics. The air bubbles are happening when we've got a wrong product control. So with the top coat, if you're playing too much with your brush, same when you're applying the gel, you are introducing the air bubbles. So once I pick up a scoop of my product and I place it on the nail, my brush is keeping contact with the product all the time. Like I don't lift my brush and put it up. I don't uh, do this motion because then I would introduce the uh, air bubbles into the product. So you need to keep the contact, um, the brush contact with your product. You don't have the air bubbles. Then I've got Kimberly, uh, then I've got Lisa asking how do I donate, I'm sorry I have no clue how those kind of stuff works so uh, probably the girls will be able to answer the question because honestly I have no clue, uh, I've got Angela, thank you, um, if you could help Lisa that would be awesome because I even didn't know that things like that exist. Then I've got Cheryl, what grid file should you use to blend the cuticle areas after sculpting? I'm usually the fan of 100 by 180 grit, 150 grit is good as well, as depending also, um, like in, gen in blending around the cuticle area, probably you're better off with the 180 grit because it's softer, so you've got less risk of cutting your clients working in such a sensitive, uh, sensitive uh, area. Uh, so 180 would be a great grid, but also I'm, I'm really a big fan of using a buffer. The buffer has the, which creates scratches, so like a, we can have a buffer which is uh, buffing the nails to the high shine, but also we can have a buffers which are um, making lots of scratches and buffing the surface of the nails, like shaping it. Uh, so this is a fantastic tool as well, like sometimes when I cannot reach it and blend it really well, then I would uh, finish it off with the buffer. And... I've got, uh, oh, I've got Paul 
Paula, when you can get back in the salon, can you please show how you have your desk set up, mainly how you position the client hand and dust extractor and that's it, thank you. And uh, thank you Steph so much, you are actually like amazing. <laughs> And, and Paula question, this is awesome questions, guys, I promise again, like, we are not going to give up the channel. Uh, cameraman, are my eyelashes good? <laughs> Sorry guys, like, I have to do my DIY here, my eyelashes are falling apart as well, because we cannot have anything. But anyway, uh, they just a magnet ones, and uh, the Neil desk position extremely important subject and i promise i will record separate video i could even use maybe olivia for that we've got such a so so short time too many ideas guys uh, uh cameraman is laughing with my lash now i think it's no, I awkward is it okay that's good now that's perfect now uh, i'm obsessed with my eyelashes but anyway let's go back to the position so i will do the video tutorial to show you where i've got everything how the dust is there, what is the position of my chair, because this is really important. So when I'm doing a client, I have the height of the desk, so I cannot sit like this, because I'm a maniac, which always cross over the legs. And this is very bad for your back, for your posture. So when we got the desk, kneel desk, I replace them, that I have to sit straight. And there is, there is no room for me to cross the legs over. And this is very helpful for my back. Since then I, I stop having my issues with the back, and another issue, uh, it is the position of your clients. I always explain it really well. So I've got sofa in here and uh, in my, or even a wardrobe. Imagine you want to push the wardrobe, which is so heavy. You wouldn't do it on the hands which are bended like this because then you wouldn't be strong enough to do it. And if your hands having, if your clients are having the hands which are bended, that means they are they are light, they are easy to operate, they are not hurting your hands, your wrist, your uh, shoulder. If your clients are sitting like this, they are pushing all their body weight and all the strength they've got into your hands because that's how you would push the wardrobe to, to move. Like even if you're tiny, you can push the wardrobe, you can push the sofa and other heavy furnitures. So when I'm, when I'm sitting my client, I always make sure the client sits straight. There is no such a thing like clients comes in and sit like, you know, legs over and, 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 uh, and sitting like um, in, in the position like this, giving me a hand in such a distance where you have to bend over like almost, almost like this to be able to do their meals. You can't because first of all, you are giving them worse quality of the work. And then secondly, you can end up your new career because uh, all the, all the shoulder, shoulder neck part is getting lots of tension here all the wrist your thumb like um when you when you're fighting with the client's hands like your thumb is getting really lots of strength like this is uh, an absolutely um important thing as well they need to keep the relaxed hands and i promise i will do the tile the tile video on that that's why i got the dust collector which has the hand rest in it as well i wish to get a better dust collector which is more effective, but this one works perfectly for taking away any weight of the client hands from my hands. Um, so um, that's why I'm still with those kind of dust collector and I don't want to swap it for, for this reason. And the desk setup, I think each of you would probably have uh, personal preferences as well, but I've got a nice desk organizer and on the top of this desk organizers, I've got always a product. Uh, I will do it in a salon as well, like to show you guys. Yeah, you have seen me. Uh, <laughs> wants to pass me the desk organizer, but you have to hold it because it's so heavy. Oh, it's so full. Uh, so full. Uh, the one in the house is full of uh, full of everything because we record all the tutorials. <laughs> no, you have to come in yeah. here. Come on. <laughs> Don't shy. Oh. Don't shy, cameraman. Don't shy. <laughs> Okay, so I've got like a uh, desk organizer and it's full of stuff, like the one in the house. Because normally in a salon I wouldn't have all this stuff. I would have my, uh, I would have my uh, dotting tools, gem pickers, acrylic paints, uh, color class gels, 
and uh, top coat base uh, primers and this desk organizer and that is on the left hand side then in the drawer because the brushes needs to be always uh, hidden from the direct sunlight so the all the brushes uh, are in the drawer and i also keep their uh, the neo file and the thing which is on top of the desk it's mean it's not uh, not the tools oh i've got my barbicide liquid as well like where i keeping the tools um, and and um, any tools which are on top of the desk means are not clean. Anything which is in a drawer is clean. Um, so this way you never get confused. Like especially when you're working with more people, you want to you want to know what is going on on each desk. So that's the, the general rule. And uh, then I've got another drawer. Actually, I love my kneel desk, and I give you another tip, guys. So I, in my drawer, I've got the um, e-file machine as well, which is always away from the desk. And this way, I've got my motor. I think it's a six years now, never had any issues as well, except that I have to clean the hand piece as well. And that's a K30, a fantastic uh, stuff because it's a portable one. Uh, and uh, then I've got all the gels, glitters behind me, plus I've got a few other um, shelves with the glitters. And then the gel polishes, we've got a separate um, cabinet, which is closed because obviously in a neon salon, you've got so much dust. And if the gel polishes are open like, uh, on the open shelves is a nightmare to clean them like you would probably need to do it every day like after almost every single client because that's what i have to do with my glitters the glitters are not with the draw uh, not with the not closed cabinet so i have to clean it constantly because i'm obsessed about um, any kind of dust and then uh, but I, I promise i will do the tutorial on 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 that then what else i've got in here thank you steph Lisa Lee, Laina Caldwell, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. And then I've got Claudia. Where do you get your many designs ideas from? Fantastic question as well. And uh, so everywhere. What did you say? Everywhere. 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 Yeah, cameraman's laughing everywhere. Um, I'm getting my ideas from everywhere. And this is amazing stuff, amazing tip, guys, for you. So when you're getting, I have my Red, Red Bull somewhere yeah so when you're getting a client and um, I always do it so when the client comes in judge it and check what handbag they have what color uh, rings or earrings they are wearing what kind of clothes they've got so if I would walk into the salon like say imagine I'm the client yeah we've got silver earrings with crystals okay she loves crystals and sparkles she got black top with gold button. Oh gosh, that's strange. Silver and gold. Okay, she, that means she's open. She likes both silver and gold. She's all black and she got silver uh, sparkly shoes matching the earrings. Okay, we have to do a black set of the nails with some crystals and that will be a perfect match. And then another um, another idea could be some black and gold and that's what I'm currently wearing on my nails. Um, another idea could be a French, could be a baby boomer, something which will go with so classy outfit. But then the next day I will get a client which will come in with um, a scarf with the peacock, say example, or a scarf uh, or a piece of jewel. I get inspiration from my client's clothes, I get inspiration from their texture, necklace, color. texture, color, anything, like honestly, right. and uh, if you want to be upfront with everyone, I suggest you follow the fashion. So as I say, like a couple minutes ago, this year fashion is like last year, like there, is, there was also a thing about the feathers as well, um, but this year is definitely those kind of designer looks uh the um, uh, snake skin definitely and the clients will like last year and the year before it was a um, leopard print and the cow print this year is going to be a snake skin so just follow what is fashion and the best way is just google out like fashion to tell say spring 2021 and then you will see kind of uh, ideas on the clothes and clothes are a fantastic uh, way to find the inspiration another inspiration you could get from is like we've got the shop which is called in fort william they opened it not long time ago because fort william is such a small town and the shop is called home bargains they got uh, the people from the uk will know what is that so they will uh, they've got so many different things and 
the, at the, I actually got those pillows and they're like a blush pink. So I know blush pink is in fashion because they've got it in stock. They've got in stock rose gold. Rose gold is in fashion as well. They would have like, they will say, think about those uh, eyelashes pillows. So you would know those kind of details are in fashion. And if you see the stock is coming, going out really quick and people are buying it, that's mean they liking this stuff and they would like to have similar kind of uh, ideas on their nails as well. Um, where else you get the inspiration from? You know, sometimes it could be a journey somewhere and you see something on the building, something on the... But in general, I would say fashion, like fa follow the fashion because people want to have their nails match with the old fits mainly. Uh, and yeah, you will, you will follow that. <clears throat> now, I just need two seconds. Because I'm trying to shout so you can guys hear me. And what else I've got in here? By the way, I have been really enjoying your tutorials with hard gel. It's my search. It was few. That's were as detailed and enjoyable. Thank you. Okay, Steph, come on, guys. All the time, Dorota, give us for us to keep us going. <laughs> Bottom right at your chat box. Oh, Steph. <laughs> then I've got Jen. It is the at least I can do. Thank you so much, really. Uh, Angela, you don't need to lose weight. I need to. I'm obsessed about it. It's my disorder. Honestly, guys, it's my disorder. Um, oh, the cameraman is laughing at my eyelashes again. I should maybe take them off. No, because my eyes are ugly. <laughs> oh, stop it, please. They are Too high. Is it good now? No, I'm horrible. I need to get out of the vision then. <laughs> because he will annoy me now. I think I cannot fix it. It's fine. doesn't matter, guys. It's a jammies. Uh, jammies if I don't care now. Um, but yeah, uh, kind of uh, weight is on my obsession. Because when I came to Scotland, I was 49 kilograms. So it was half of me. And so then living in Scotland... Um, I'm eating too much sweeties and I can feel it. Uh, but of course, each of us, I think, feel different in our bodies. So, yeah, I think it's a part, like, I don't know. I, I feel sometimes it is a kind of personal thing. Like, I'm really conscious about my eyes. I'm really conscious about my weight. And there might be people which will say, no, this is fine. Like, it doesn't... Like, this is okay. And then another person might feel conscious about their nose or might feel conscious about the hair or a toes or nails or any other stuff. And for the people which are sitting and watching it, like, they would say, no, no, you're crazy. And I think each of us have those kind of stuff. Like, cameraman have some stuff. My daughter has some stuff. And kind of the, when I chat with the friends, they've got their own issues. Like, and each of us will see the things different way. But yeah, <laughs> so the weight and eyes is my issue. That's why I'm so obsessed with the eyelashes and I, I don't show, I kind of try to wear them all the time so they hide my ugly eyes. Not the eyes, eyelids. <laughs> okay, I've got here uh, the next question. Excitement. Yeah, I am kind of crazy person a little bit as well. I've got Colleen watching me every day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angela. Uh, thank you so much, Kimberly. Uh, Mazda says this is a good organized. I miss it most of it. Hope this will be saved. Yes, uh, the live video is going to be saved, and uh, I will I will also create a playlist because if you guys enjoy it, we could once we sometimes have like those kind of loose chats, uh, especially that's. They, they are some days, especially now, during the pandemic, like, I find that there are some days when I'm feeling like I can't be bothered to do the nails. I wish to learn something, but more in a loose way, like, not not as, um, not as like, practical. I can't be bothered to pick up my brush. I would rather to maybe have a chat about the ideas, a chat about some kind of maybe chemistry or or other new issues rather than sitting and doing something so i think um 
this is really good for me as well like because obviously we're not able to meet with many friends and stuff like that uh, so it's a really good entertainment guys as well uh, as way for me uh, to having all those kind of um, chats uh, don't be shy cameraman yes don't be shy he's always so shy guys <laughs> this is a personal stuff as well so yeah cameraman is like um he's a big man obviously but he's also a good soft um, soft hearted one like he's shy he's good he's helpful and he's so sweet <clears throat> what else i've got how do you uh, Colleen, how deep should be C curve for the salon news? 30%. Salon news, 30% uh, C curve. Well, it's okay. <laughs> My gosh, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> C curve, 30%. Competition meal, 50%. And I'm kind of fan which likes the news about 40%. Like 50% is, is really extreme. And you need to have the arches pretty low to be able to achieve those kind of looks. So for coffin shape, we wouldn't be able to achieve 50% C curve just because the mm, like the, the lower arches are not going as far down. It is only possible like with a pipe shape or a square shape. And I'm not the fan of really low um, arches. Like I feel it's difficult to doing the things with the nails which got too low. Uh, arches as well, but 30% for a salon news is a perfect salon new. I've got Lisa. I have just started using sculpting forms. Can you tell me what I am doing wrong? Because they keep popping open underneath my finger and I love your work. Okay, so possibly you might have to oily your oily fingers and maybe you touching the form so then they don't have enough glue. Secondly, if you are using the forms which don't have extra wings, they are always opening up so it is a kind of cheaper stuff which we just opens up uh, so that would be the answer for the question and uh, i also find it like i am i tend to squeeze first of all at the top part of the form like secure it to the finger and then i would squeeze it and secure it from the from the bottom but for me the form was opening up when i was using the good one because i'm not talking about like those flat like mm, forms with out of wings they they usually pop up and open up uh, but the forms with the wings uh, they was opening up because uh, I have two oily fingers so make sure your fingers are really like clean before you touch the uh, touch the form I hope this helps also if you if you guys uh, want some kind of subject uh, which you um, would like to find the answer for it as well search on uh, YouTube uh, Palitska and then the subject. So Palitska Ombre, Palitska how to apply the new forms, Palitska Apex placement, Palitska Seeker, Palitska Pinching and whatever question you've got because we've got how many videos? 400? 400 videos. There is about 400 tutorials on the YouTube and I know they are not all available like when you go into the videos only the first couple is showing usually so just search it and, uh, and it will come up in the search results. I uh, with all the questions you've got. Uh, then I got Lisa. I just started. Okay, that was answered. Thank you, Koki. Uh, that's good, Angela. I think the distance is good when it comes to them. <laughs> uh, Becky, I was thinking you should do a makeup tutorial. Uh, sorry, I used this code. I was thinking you should do a makeup tutorial. You're so damn pretty. It's a good makeup, honestly. But it's not only a makeup. I'm okay. I'm lucky. Uh, when it comes to the skin, I'm really lucky, like because I have not too much uh, issues with the skin. But it is also my evening routine. No matter how drunk I am, no matter how lazy I am. I'm talking about the nights out. They don't happen for the last year, obviously. But it doesn't matter how lazy I am. If I have put a heavy makeup on my face before i go to bed the makeup has to be always removed like to keep your skin clean um so i never go like with the makeup to bed uh, and i think this is a pretty important um uh, important thing and another important thing is um scrub exfoliating the skin like removing any dead tissues from your skin i think that keeps the skin much uh, a quite pretty good condition as well with the makeup i wouldn't say i've got a perfect skills but um, what I find it um, very helpful for me is if you've got any wrinkles, obviously I'm like, you know, nearly 40 now, 
maybe not nearly, but yeah, close to. If I've got any wrinkles, I would uh, use the highlighter to make this place lighter, mm -hmm. so it's more pop out and you don't see the depression. And then the places which are bigger, so say like my cheeks, I would use the bronzer to make them smaller. So that's the main rule. Anything which is deep and you want bigger, just use highlighter. And anything which is too big and you want smaller, just use darker color. <laughs> so that's a good uh, tip. And what else I've got? Uh, I've got Lisa. Hi, Dorota. I'm 60 years old and I was wondering what new length and shape would be, um, I cannot pronounce this word, good for my age. Any. It's a personal, it's, don't, don't, don't judge people, guys, by the age. I mean, you can be 80 years old and you can be, having like a long stilet on yours if you if you feel that's what you like if you feel this is what you should wear like I, I i think we should all do what we feel is right to us there shouldn't be such a thing like you cannot wear this skirt because you are having so many years like you shouldn't really look look for that and um, but uh, i would more follow the things like what is your lifestyle if you say example an active person which is climbing climbing the mountains say example i wouldn't give you a long stiletto or long coffin shaped nails i would give you more kind of almond shaped nails so they safer for you to to do all those kind of activities and um, follow your lifestyle rather than the age honestly there is no such as things like i've got i had some lady like and this was awesome this was absolutely fantastic she came into the salon and that was her 100th birthday and she looked so fantastic like makeup nails all glammed up and uh, we went upstairs to do the eyebrows and we got stairs in the salon and she was so fit like you know walking on the stairs and jumping into the bed which is high and when i started doing her eyebrows she told me she had her 100th uh, birthday uh, today and i was like oh my gosh like so don't 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 go by the age and i always uh, when we having um chat with the friends we always laugh as well because i'm crazy about the crystals and i'm so positively thinking person that i always tell them that when i'm 100 years old for my 100th birthday i want the uh, swarovski crystal wheelchair so i can be glam up when i'm 100 years old as well the age is is only a number like honestly and that's what i want to think about the age as well it is only a number so do anything you would like to wear on your nails what else i've got I, I so much enjoy it actually this evening. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Do you? I got Pam asking if I paint canvases too. No, I don't paint canvases. Um, I never did actually, and I wasn't as good at art. I couldn't paint the face. I couldn't. It, it is all experience which I have learned on nails and in my previous q and I, I have showed my work like how it was looking like when I started my career like so the roses was looking like cabbages and the nails was so misshaped and it's all practice um, and I don't paint on the canvas only on the nails. Uh, Miss Bunny, thank you. I have two wear extension ever since I started diabetic medics. My nails used to be thick and long and strong. Now they are thin and brittle. I want to cry. Oh, I'm so sorry like uh, to hear that then i've got jen <laughs> thank you i'm searching for the questions okay I've got Maria saying good morning. It is evening uh, in here, but good morning. Oh, I've got uh, Handy Works from Five. Not far away from us. Uh, Fort William is not far away from Five. And the caviar beads, yes, <laughs> caviar. And we have done some uh, nice, beautiful flower with the caviar beads. Yes, I know. We have done really beautiful uh, caviar beads um, tutorial, guys, for you as well. 
now let me go quickly to the questions which we had also on the uh, on the comment as well just to make sure i'm answering all of them i don't want to disappoint anyone because there was some good one okay Hey. This is a long question. I think I have flat nail beds, but the side walls are deep too and confusing me with what kind of C curve and nail bed I actually have and if I should or should not pinch it. I have tried pinching gently with a pinching tool. It makes the enhancement looks great but I feel like my natural nails look different. I overfiled the extra skin on my sidewalls in the groove too, causing my sidewalls nail paint and bed to look different. How do you know if you should not pinch the nails or there is a situation where you should not? Also, if you cause any damage to the nail from pinching, how could you tell or what would the potential damage be? Also, if you have if you overfile at your sidewalls, will grow out repair the problem that's caused. Will grow out repair the problems that uh, that causes. Okay, so uh, regarding the the pinching, if we've got really flat nails uh, and uh, we pinch it, they look much better, and I totally agree with that. I also think they are stronger as well. But we need to remember that uh, the, not all the nails are suitable for the pinching. And I always repeat it when, when I'm doing the pinching on the tutorials, I always repeat it that we shouldn't be pinching uh, the nails which are very thin. You also don't want to over pinching. The pinching shouldn't be overly too, uh, too painful. Like your models shouldn't feel it or the clients shouldn't feel the pain with it. If you are making it uh, very painful to them, that's mean you are doing something uh, wrong or you are doing it too strong. And if you would over pinch it, imagine this is the worst case scenario. So the worst case scenario is like you've got flat nail and then you start pinching it. You pinching and you have over pinch it and the product was weaker in this point. What will happen? This place would crack and it can crack all the way down to matrix and cause the permanent damage to the nail. And so this is a worst case scenario. And when we're doing a pinching, you need to always uh, remember that if there is a place which is <laughs> liking my demonstration if there is a place which is thinner at the one side and place which is thicker at the other side when we squeeze it this place will squeeze more so you wouldn't get an even pinch yeah you will get twisted cigar this is uh, why this is very important to apply the product evenly through the entire surface so this way you've got a really uh, nice and even uh, pinch and uh, another thing which can happen when we pinch the nails which shouldn't be pinched is obviously the uh, the product lifting on the sides then i've got another questions uh, is perfect news owned by you so it's not perfect news perfect news is a different brand this one is new perfect and no it is not owned by me when i started my new technician career i was working with ibd then newbar then nsi astonishing news and then from astonishing news i went into the new perfect in the meantime i have picked a couple of the other different brands as well and i really feel the new perfect is kind of almost like my own I love their product so much. That's why so maybe so many people think this is my brand because I do really feel it is my product. It is a product which uh, which is just like perfect for my needs, perfect for my clients. It has my package, like not my package, but it's a package which goes with me. The previous black pots, so I was always kind of wearing black, and and even the packaging is kind of. I know it's a stupid thing to look into the packaging, but yes it is just a gel which you can say like it is my gel same this one the fiber gels the diamond pots yes it is mine i mean it is but not it my brand done for you yeah but like I, I just feel it like 
it is mine. I helped them to together with an uh, amazing nail technician, which was also the educator for a nail perfect. Uh, Tracy, we was working on the paint on French gel. We was working on the angular brush together for a, to create a perfect smile line. So like, you know, I was testing so many different products like foil design gel. I was testing so many different products, even a high shine, no white top gel. It is not kind of stuff like which is just happening overnight. Like there is lots of, um, lots of tests, lots of like um, regulations and also the quality of the product as well, like needs to be spot on. And I think I would like, it is so much involved in it. Like I'm not, I'm not rushing to own my brand. I think it's quite, quite a lot of work involved with it. And, and uh, the factory, which is producing a new perfect, not only new perfect, they, they also got a different uh, brands as well, like really reputable brands as well. Um, they, they doing fantastic work with it. And uh, I think I will stick with them for as long as they are going to produce such as good products. And not all of them are perfect. Like, you know, they, they sometimes came up with the stuff which I'm not fan of. Um, maybe the color I don't like, or maybe the consistency, or or um, or even some product like, uh, and then we don't stock it. So I'm only, usually when they came up with the new product, I will just buy it, one. I will test it myself, the girls in the salon will test it, my clients will wear it, I will wear it, and then if I'm happy with the quality, uh, if I'm happy the way they behave and everything, then we will buy more, buy more, I mean couple, because we are a really small distributor, guys, like we really, really small distributor, um, and um, and then we will just put it up on our website and, and sell the Neil Perfect because we are only the distributor of the Neil Perfect. And the only products which are my brand, that's the Desire Neil's brushes. So that will be the D-liner because that was something I was really missing from Neil Perfect. That was a very beautiful one stroke brush. And we already start working on the one stroke brushes with um, Tracy. Uh, we was testing some of the brushes and everything, but obviously it never happened in New Perfect, and I was feeling like mm, I'm I'm missing. I needing this product, like I I need to have those kind of brush, and then we uh, developed my own uh, brushes. So the stuff which has those D uh, D letter in it, that's my brand, and the New Perfect is a brand which is uh, uh, which is um, a brand based in a European Union country. Uh, so at the moment, actually, I'm really disappointed as well because of the Brexit, we've got some delays in the delivery as well. We're actually waiting over a month now for the last order which we have placed. So I hope everything will sort uh, sort out soon. But let's check the other questions. First, uh, big kisses, Mary, to you as well. Miss Bunny, can you thin out thick gel polish and with what? You could thin it out with the top probably. I wouldn't I wouldn't mix it too too much because it has it is a chemistry, so you don't want to interfere too much into the ingredients. But if I do remember, there might be even some products which is especially designed product to thin out the gel polishes. Uh, common sense as well but don't try it i maybe even shouldn't say it out loud in general monomer is used in gels uh, to give the right viscosity to thin out the gels but then we are not a factory we are not chemist and i would be scared to try those kind of mixtures and um, that's why i'm not fan of some of the gel polishes as well because you do one set of the nails and then they are thick like and they clumpy and they're so hard to apply it so you're basically wasting a, a bottle and i find it uh, this is quite often happening in those small bottle uh, gel polishes uh, that's that's you can do only a couple sets and then those gel polishes uh, go into the bin i prefer the bigger sizes because i feel the consistency of those gel polishes stays just right for longer uh, is the fiber gel easy to work with science is currently with science i currently use the poly gel i've got cocky asking if i hope i pronounced it right if the fiber gel is easy to work and she's working currently with the poly gel uh, the question is 
have you start working with the poly gel because you are an acrylic neon technician if that's the answer if the answer for this question is yes then the fiber gel might be not easy to work with because gel is thinner consistency poly gel is a fantastic uh, fantastic stuff for acrylic neon technicians gel and poly gel and acrylic has completely different consistency poly gel is more like acrylic the only difference with it is that you've got more time to play with it uh, but it behaves more like acrylic and the gel is more runny consistency so you have to work really fast with it like i'm fan of the runny consistency because i don't have to press and shape the needle uh, i kind of like more slap it on and i just drag it with my brush but then you could do it with the acrylic as well <sighs> nothing is easy if we use something for the first time we need to practice something like a couple of times and and if you if you use the poly gel and you're getting really good results i think i would stick with the poly gel why why would you change it if you do it with the acrylic and you're getting fantastic results with the acrylics and you you yeah, like you okay with the smell and and other stuff just stick with the acrylics uh, unless you want to maybe searching for a new different experience or you're bored and you want to add uh, another kind of services for your client then maybe search for another things but uh, um i think we're better off there's very little new technician in this world which are uh, fluent at all the systems which are able to do a perfect like acrylics perfect gels perfect for gels like it's really handful of those kind of new technician um, and and i rather just stick with the one system i prefer the most and then keep the keep the rest only as an addition and then i got becky size i currently have two flooded cuticles how do i fix it my safety bit is it is hard to do to neatly and without of hurting yes you have to watch it to don't hurt your skin now like if you've got product over your over your cuticles i would remove it with the safety bit, uh, with them with the cuticle bit uh, it is very hard to reach uh, but definitely you need to apply the product thinner around the cuticle area even is better if you're a beginner i know they teach us to go really as close as possible to the cuticles but i think if you're a new beginner you might be better off to living um, half a millimeter uh, distance from the cuticle rather than going too close to the cuticle uh, because uh, once you finish shaping the nails you can apply the gel polish very close to the cuticle because you've got less risk of flooding your cuticles with the gel polish than you do with the gel or acrylic then i've got yes miss bunny thumbs up absolutely right and also share it as well because from all the shares and the people which will write in the comments done we will pick up the winner of the one stroke for beginners training as well and then i've got could you do a video using fiber gel i am not sure how long to cure it or apply it please the gel seems a bit stiff to use so the fiber gel isn't really stiff to use it is all the pen all the gels um consistency is depending on the temperatures of your room the warmer is the room the more watery the gel is the more runny and the colder it is like see when i would go to the salon now and if i would try to pick up the the gel it would be so solid consistency that it will be very difficult to work with so in this case um when this is example monday morning and uh, it's a winter like minus 10 uh, I would put my gels close to the heater just so they kind of uh, pick up the room temperatures and they are better consistency to, uh, for me to work. In the summertime, uh, I'm preferring this watery consistency. Uh, you could cool down the gels so they are having a thicker consistency. So you can play with the consistency uh, depending uh, what are your preferences because I know they are neon technicians which love the solid consistency of the gels. They don't want the gel to move. They wanted it to put their and kind of uh, be able to work and take under time i prefer those kind of runny consistency when i can work really quick with the brush and there's lots of tutorials on the fiber gels like i mean most of the needles i have done it they are with the fiber gel at the minute we are working on the practice finger because um, um, obviously the work of the clients is not allowed so i have to practice only on my needles around the clients but they will be also even more as well then I've got, I love the packaging as well. 
and I look at the same, it is great product. Mm, 155 sweet sites, I've got Sheridan commenting. 155 is out of stock, I'm waiting for delivery. I have, like obviously we, we don't stock many of the products, so um, it is out of stock. Thank you so much guys also as well for all the orders coming as well. Um, and then I've got Kimber, which loves that color as well. Honestly, it's my favorite one, but they actually came up with another uh, new color and I really need to push for them like to get those pastel colors. They've got Schooly Collection and I didn't get it yet. Uh, Schooly Collection is more kind of purples, reds, and I feel like they've got already so many purples and so many reds that we didn't get this collection. But there is a beautiful color which is called, uh, two, I just got it, 203. And it's like a very baby pink. I think this one is pretty nice. There's also a nice glitter collection. And I'm just waiting for a delivery of that. So I will be doing lots of tutorials on those kind of colors as well. Uh, because I think they are fab. And then I've got... Uh, ah, I see my room is a wee bit cold. That is maybe why it is stiff. Then thank you so much. Yes, uh, Handy, just, uh, just put it near the heater. And then depending how long you will keep it near the heater, it will have either... Um, a very runny consistency uh, or it will be just a perfect uh, perfect consistency then i've got jen did i miss something is there something we can win if so how okay jen uh, by sharing this live video or a channel you can win the one stroke training for uh, beginners um, and there's eight to nine beautiful designs uh, on this training and after completing the designs uh, you can receive the certificate as well <clears throat> uh, by sharing this uh, live video now guys we are going to do two seconds break <coughs> just so i can catch up my voice and i will grab um i will just grab um um like drink so you just grab the drink and we come back like really one minute break and then we come back uh, with the next question. So you also got the time to put the questions up as well.